Welcome to Wednesday Night Live. We always enjoy these opportunities to come together virtually. We hope you're inside safe and warm in this record-breaking weather. I'm Steve Pulis, uh, youth and associate pastor here at Central Assembly. I'm Josh Seaman, middle school pastor here at Central and looking forward to a conversation with you tonight, Steve. It's always good to be together, Josh. Yes. Absolutely. Our theme is connecting. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit at the beginning about how families can connect with each other. We're going to talk about how Central youth are connecting and what we're doing to connect students with each other and with God. And then finally, as always, we're going to end in prayer and connect with God before we wrap things up this evening. So thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, Josh came across a study last week that really kind of surprised me. Yeah. 1,500 different students were surveyed by the Wheatley Institute. They found out that in the last year during COVID, depression had actually dropped, was 10% lower than just two years earlier. I didn't expect that. Mm, same. Yeah. I also didn't expect some of the findings that the survey found. And so I thought there were some insights there that might help families of any age or yeah. really any group of people to kind of see what was discovered. And the first finding that I wanted to look at, number one, it did find that teens are sleeping more mm. than they were pre-COVID, which yeah. is good news, right? It is, yeah, because teens need so much sleep. They're at that phase of their life where their brains are going through huge developmental changes, their bodies are, and they need a lot of extra sleep. And the survey did, it found that teens are getting more sleep now than they did um, pre-quarantine and COVID. Um, it jumped from 55% um, percent up to 84% that we're getting seven or more hours of sleep a night. And so I mean, we know having teenagers in our home, a teen that is sleeping well, usually makes for a better mood and a better, better environment at home. And so it did, we did see that teens are sleeping more, getting more rest. It's helping them in school, it's helping them um, just emotionally, depression has decreased because of that. So it's definitely a really good sign there. Um, another thing that that survey noted was teens are actually spending more time with their family. What were some of the thoughts you had when you read that? Yeah, it said 68% of the teens yeah. spending more time with mm -hmm. their family. It's kind of like the question of the sleep. How do we keep that going afterwards? Mm -hmm. I mean, hopefully right. for a lot of us, we're getting that better full night's sleep. Mm -hmm. How do we keep engaging those habits with families as well? What are some ways in which we can as families, and again, define family as, as whoever it is that you might be uh, in a family relationship with, doesn't just have to be younger kids, but uh, how can families spend some time together? And Josh, I know we've got some ideas we wanted to share tonight of yeah. ways families can continue spending time together. Right, and certainly, I mean, there's no expectations for families to try and tackle all these things. Families are different. Um, you know, what may work for one family may not work for another. And then yeah, families are in different seasons of life. What you did when your children were younger and smaller may be way different um, when they're older and, 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 and as teenagers. But we, what we do see is there are natural connection times for families. And so if, if parents or, or, or guardians, caregivers can look with intentional eyes, there are those natural connection times and points throughout the day. And one of those times is just when families are up getting ready together in the morning. Maybe parents are up getting ready for work, um, students are up getting ready for school, and there's natural points of connection through that. Maybe uh, families could play worship music as they're getting together, kind of helping that mindset be in a, in a positive way, um, focusing on Jesus in the morning through worship music is, is a great way. Then even just taking time before we head out the door to pray together, um, pray over one another for the day, for maybe kids get on the bus, parents leave for work, um, maybe even have, as your kids get older, having coffee conversations. Maybe they're not into eating breakfast right off the morning, but maybe sitting together, drinking a cup of coffee together, praying together, just having conversation together in the morning. Um, and then, of course, another place in the mornings that parents have with their children and their students is just those car rides. I mean, when they're in the car with us, we have a captive audience. And, uh, you know, and so maybe consider that time to be a time of being able to connect with them. So maybe, maybe there's, a, you know, there's no expectations or there's no phones during that 15 to 20 minute car ride. You know, we're going to focus on having conversation or connecting with one another. Um, ways, those are just some simple uh, ways that parents and kids 
could find time to have common conversation together. Yeah, I, I think about in our family, and again, every family's got to figure out the mm -hmm. best way to do this, but we've been doing something we call Guy's Breakfast for 10 years now. Yeah. Uh, Colin's getting ready to graduate from high school, and we'll kind of end our 10-year run. But uh, every Thursday morning, uh, depending on the weather and other things, but during the school year, uh, we go to Big Mama's, and it's 15 minutes. I mean, it's not real long. Joe knows what we order. He's usually got it ready when he sees us walking through the door. We sit down together, have our breakfast. It doesn't have to be a long thing. doesn't have to be a complicated thing, but finding that time for us to weekly do that uh, is very meaningful to us. Uh, I think two more times that families could pick from, and again, it's probably find one of these that works for mm -hmm. them, definitely not all of them, but what works best for you, is, is a meal time. Mm -hmm. You know, dinner time seems yeah. to be that time when everybody gets home. And so consistently, as often as you can, uh, I've read some places where uh, people recommend having dinner one time together a week as a family. Well, I know at our house, we have dinner together just about every night. I mean, everybody mm. comes together when it's time to eat. But making that time, yeah. again, a no-phone zone. Don't bring your phones mm -hmm. to the table. Cultivate conversation. I was reading how that oftentimes younger children learn how to tell stories, learn how to shape mm -hmm. their experiences by hearing the model of a mom or a dad doing that at a mealtime particularly and seeing that example yeah. in front of them. So mealtime can be a key connection time. What was the best thing of your day? What was the hardest thing of your day? Yeah. Those kinds of conversations. And then I think the fourth natural connection time that we're talking about is bedtime. Mm -hmm. You know, just before kids go to bed. And some kids do better in the mornings. Some kids do better at bedtime. But uh, some students I know will, man, right before they go to bed, that's a time when they really want to open up and talk. They're mm -hmm. processing about their days. Uh, I know I've heard Kim Catron talk about in her family when their kids were growing up, um, they would come jump on their parents' bed at night, and basically the kids would tuck the parents in once mm -hmm. the kids got a little bit older. But that was the time when they really talked through and processed everything. Yeah. So if your kids are little and you're still tucking them in, it's basically finding between first thing in the morning, times we're together mm -hmm. in vehicles, those ride times that we have, dinner time or bedtime, one of those times probably works for you. Mm -hmm. And again, if you don't have kids around the house anymore, who are the people that you do engage with? Yeah. Which one of those times might function and, and work for you as mm -hmm. well? So um, interesting. Um, study found that yeah. teens are spending more time with their families, so we want to encourage those good habits and keep them going. The, the third and final finding that really stu stood out to me mm -hmm. was that teens are spending less time on social media. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that one more time because I had to read it twice when yeah. I saw the study. Did not expect to hear that at all. Maybe you can help Same, unpack yeah. that a little bit for yeah. us. But teens are spending less time in the last year on social media than they were before the pandemic. Yeah, did you choke on your coffee when you read that? I mean, I, that was <laughs> definitely one that I didn't anticipate, especially with teens not being out, um, schools being closed down, teens spending more time at home. I would have anticipated that number to have gone up, but it didn't. Now, what it did find is teens were spending, uh, they were having increased screen time, but there was less time on social media. And, and there were, you know, they, they gave a few reasons as to why that may be. Um, and we could speculate on why teens may have spent less time on social media. But what we know that is that it had a positive net effect, that kids were spending less time, students less time on social media. And it does help. Um, we know that we've read lots of studies there's a strong correlation between the amount of time on social media and an increased risk of depression. And so that factor alone helped teens, just help that factor decrease um, for students over this, this quarantine time. And so, I mean, none of this is to minimize things that families or individuals may have experienced during the season of COVID, but, um, through all the difficulty, there have been some some positive takeaways, some things that hopefully as families that we can um, kind of those habits maybe that we developed that we can continue with. I know our family isn't as busy as we were pre-COVID, and I hope that there's some of those habits that we can continue with, um, points of connection with one another, even as we move beyond um, COVID and that crisis. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it does become kind of a personal question. Okay, if a little less time on social media, not that in and of itself it's bad, but mm -hmm. if there's too much time on there, how do I apply that to my life? Mm -hmm. Are there certain times when I don't 
want to be involved in social media or don't want to fall into that hole of just continuing to scroll down and down and down and down. There are times for me where at the end of the day when I get home, I'll put my phone sometimes in another room mm -hmm. while we're getting ready for dinner when we've got that time. And yeah, I can check it later in case something came through I need to see. But there are blocks of times when family's the priority and not always having that notification yeah. distract me from what's going on can be, I think, a key for anybody yeah, today. Certainly. Yeah, certainly. Yeah. Well, we've talked a little bit about how families can continue to connect with each other. Um, let's talk a little bit about what we're doing at Central Youth. Yeah. You know, ways that yeah. we can connect during the pandemic. It's It's been hard. It's been a challenge to connect students mm. with each other, to stay connected. And so now as we are um, have some opportunities to start to, in a safe way, do a little bit more, uh, I'm really looking forward to February 24th and March 24th. Yes. February 24th and March 24th. Uh, a week from Wednesday, a week from tonight, on February 24th, we've got a Wednesday night worship experience, a youth service happening in the Activity Center. So let everybody know. If you know some uh, students who have really been looking forward to getting back together, February 24th, we're going to have everybody together. And then March 24th, we're moving back to regular Wednesday night youth services. So we'll have one February 24th. And then right after spring break, uh, we'll have everything in place to go weekly on that. And that'll be a blast. Yeah. Um, I think really worshiping together, but allowing students to connect with each other. Uh, again, we'll have protocols in place, masks, safety will, will be the first thing we look at, but really wanting that to occur. And then we're also uh, finally able to start some youth activities. We've been for about a year wanting to have monthly youth activities going on and just kept putting that a couple months later, a couple months later, a couple months later because yeah. of everything that was happening. Now we're at a point where we can do that in a safe way as mm -hmm. well. Um, so uh, in February, we're going to have youth activities that will start. And we'll do some of those in a smaller group mm -hmm. again to keep things safe. You know, what are some ways, Josh, uh, if you, if some of the people listening, you know, they, wanna, they don't want to miss out. Uh, yeah. What are ways to hear what's going on with Central Youth? Yeah. So if you're wanting to know what's going on with Central Youth for parents, the primary way that we will communicate is through email. So there is a weekly email that Kim Catron sends out. And if you're not on that uh, weekly list, we'd love for you to get on that. If you could email Kim at kcatron at centralassembly.org, she would be happy to get you on that list. So you're getting a weekly email. And that really is just highlighting what's coming up this week and maybe in the near future, some events that are going on. So it's a great way to stay informed and know what's happening in Central Youth. So email is the primary way that we're gonna communicate with parents. And then for students, we use the GroupMe app. And that has been a fun way, even this week, that we have, have connected with students. We did a fun Friday kind of giveaway. Um, this week with Valentine's Day mm -hmm. uh, was the uh, Valentine meme contest. So students submitted some of their Valentines. And there, there were some pretty good ones. I'll share with you some of the winners that we had uh, some of the cheesy, cheesy ones. Um, there was one that was, um, you know, you're just like water, except Jesus turned you into fine. Oh, that was so cheesy, yes. cheesy, that's but why good. It won, right? yeah. yeah, that's why it won. A middle school one was everybody is out there looking for Valentine's, and I'm just trying to remember the number for Pizza Hut. <laughs> that was a good one. Uh, that was that one for middle school. And this was this is a good one. Guys, you may want to write this down. This, this will be a good one you could use. If I could rearrange the alphabet, I would put you and I together. Uh -huh. So another good one that you could pick up. And of course, uh, you got to have a biblical one in there is a good biblical one. Um, uh, this student submitted, I was reading the book of numbers and I didn't see yours in there. What was it again? And so uh, those are some of the winners. But again, a fun way of connecting. So Students, we'd love to. If you're not um, in the group, me would love to add you to um, your tribe's group. Me, um, so parents, I know sometimes you're tired of getting those notifications. If you want to turn those off, we'd be happy to get your students' number or information on there so that we could connect with them. Instagram is also another way that parents and students can all hear and um, connect with what's going on at Central Youth, and that is at Central Assembly Youth. So if you want to connect with us on Instagram please find us there at Central Assembly Youth. And if you need have any questions or need help accessing any of this information, please feel free to reach out to us, and, or you can email Kim Catron, again, at kcatron at centralassembly.org. Um, so th those are some ways that you can connect um, with Central Youth. So we've talked about parents connecting with 
their students. We've talked about students being able to connect with students. And again, we've got to that time of the evening where we want to spend some time just connecting with God in prayer. And so we're going to spend a few minutes praying for our families and their connections. We're going to pray for our students and their connections with one another and just um, spend some time with God together tonight. Amen. Join, Steve, would you join me in prayer? Absolutely. Amen. Father, we thank you um, for this night. We thank you for um, how good and faithful you have been in this season um, through so many of the difficult things that we have experienced through COVID. As we've, as we've taught tonight, Lord, there um, have been challenges, but there's also been some wonderful takeaways, Lord, some wonderful things that have happened in our students and in our families. And we just ask, Father, for your grace and your help. Some of these yes. practices and habits that families have developed through quarantine and through this season of COVID, we pray that those would continue. Those times of connecting that are just so important, we pray that you would help um, parents and families be intentional in connecting with one another, having conversations with one another. Lord, we've seen how this has just been such a blessing and an, and an uplifting in um, teens' spirits and minds and their hearts. And so we just ask for these habits to continue. Lord, um, we pray that you would just surround our families, that you would continue to give moms and dads and guardians just wisdom and grace as they guide their children and teens through these very formative years, Lord. Yes, Lord, we uh, also pray specifically for students. God, we know how difficult it's been over the last several months to connect with each other, limited activities, limited opportunities. And so now, Lord, as uh, we know that people connect with you better when they connect in just that relationship environment, we pray that uh, you would help students, uh, help them to be able to connect with one another, connect to and experience your love through their friendships with each other. Lord, we also pray for schoolwork. It's difficult uh, when so many have been uh, had different schedules and uh, even in Springfield just now kind of moving back to more days on site. Some have gotten behind as I've talked with students how difficult it is in different environments to keep up. Lord, I just pray you'd uh, provide those opportunities, the discipline to, to stick with the school work that's needed. Ultimately, we want people to know you, God. We want people to grow in you. We want students to become more like you. We know you're shaping the next generation of believers. So we pray for your spirit to do the work in each of their lives, to use them mightily, Lord, to give them that opportunity to talk about church, to talk about Jesus, to let conversations naturally come up with other friends that don't know you. Uh, so help us, Lord, in the days and weeks ahead to connect with each other, to connect with you, and for you then to use us uh, in our lives. Josh, why don't we kind of conclude this time? Maybe each of us pray a, a final prayer of God's help and blessing yeah. for the next week for everybody that's mm -hmm. listening. And let's pray for the Holy Spirit to maybe nudge us with something mm -hmm. that's been shared today. How do we apply what we've yeah. talked about here to our everyday yeah. life? Why don't you go first and then I'll wrap Amen. us up. Amen. Father, thank you so much for um, our central family. Thank you um, for just how we are able to gather and to connect with one another through small groups, through um, the service opportunities that we have. We just thank you for how you are growing your body and what you're doing in and through us. And so um, as we go to our points of mission, whether it be to school, whether it be to our place of work, whether we're out in the community, I pray, Jesus, that you would just continue to use us, Lord, to be, um, you're just your hands and feet extended to people in need. Give us opportunities to share your love and grace with others. Give us opportunities, those that we've formed relationships with and, and are getting to know, Lord, that there would be a point of connection and conversation about you. Just open the door in those ways, Lord. And uh, we just ask that um, as Jim, uh, Pastor Jim has uh, been preaching and as we've been and praying for God that you would that you would just send upon this community just a, an awakening a yes. spiritual awakening yes, and that God. people would come to know you that those that the chains of addiction would break from people's lives Lord that that uh, just the hopeless mindsets that people have had even even maybe just through family generations and patterns that that would be broken that hope would arise in their hearts and their minds as they encounter you Jesus we just pray, God, that you would move in that way upon this city, move upon yes. 
um, this community and bring a revival. We pray, Jesus, in your name. Yes. Lord, I thank you for a church that values every generation. I thank you for the generation that's gone before us that loves the generations coming behind them. I thank you for the prayer warriors in this church that regularly pray for youth and children and family ministries and want to see your spirit as Josh has just prayed poured out upon that next generation. I thank you for the example that they are for all of us. Lord, let us all live that type of life that children and youth look up to and say, we want to follow you as you follow Jesus. Lord, may you connect each of our students, Lord, with multiple people across our congregation, obviously with godly parents who love and point them and and are the example to them. But Lord, let them connect with other individuals, friends of parents, small group leaders, tribe leaders, others within our church, and let that combined effort shape each of us to be more like Jesus. Now we conclude by just asking your spirit, if there's anything we need to do with what we've heard today, if there's been something from earlier in this time that you impressed upon us that we should be obedient to, we should add to our routine, or we should take away from our routine, or we should keep doing some things, good habits that we've got in place, once more, just solidify that commitment in our life and what your spirit wants to do this time. Uh, We thank you that we can gather together. We thank you for the power of prayer. We thank you for everything that you're doing. You're ordering our steps and directing us as we continue to move forward. We conclude by giving you all the credit, all the glory. We praise you. We thank you. We love you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Hey, thanks, church. Thanks for joining with us. Thanks for praying with us. Thanks for believing in the youth and believing in each other. Thanks. We'll see you on Sunday and again next week.